Well, good morning, everyone. Take your Bibles. Go to Genesis chapter 30. Mike couldn't believe it. He said, there ain't no way you could get that done that fast. I will not get through chapter 30 today, but uh, maybe next month. <laughs> Father, thank you for your blessings this morning. Thank you for letting us be at church on a Sunday morning. Lord, just thank you for a church to come to. Uh, Lord, again, uh, put your blessings upon the word that's being read today and all the little classes here and the other churches around town, Lord, that are trying to do you, serve you and, and uh, do what you'd have them to do. I just pray for them also. Lord, again, thank you for uh, all you've done. Thank you for a Bible. Thank you most of all for our precious Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We'll praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Real quick, the uh, property over there came up for uh, sale. Uh, it is in, what did you say, real rough shape? <laughs> Not real rough. It looks rough. It looks rough. Uh, but what we do is it would have to be really, really bad. That house over here we bought, when we bought that house, we didn't think that was really rough either. But when we got done with it, it was... It, well, the only thing left standing was the, the front wall. It was a 20, 20 by 20 concrete pad on the ground. And the, the east wall, the west wall, and the front wall, and there was no roof, no ceiling, no nothing. Uh, I mean, everything was gone. The whole thing was gone. And we go, that wasn't rough either. That was okay. That was, just, that was just a starting point. We had to get down to a starting point, and then we put it back together. So this is nowhere near that. Uh, but what that does is that gives us the property over there which will be on the front of the, the lot. And if we ever do anything on that end and put a building up or whatever we want to do, you have the, the, the land, you'll have the land to do it. So we made an offer of 150000 and an anonymous owner, uh, bidder said that he would uh, help. And then I had somebody else stand there and say, well, well, I want to help too. Are you going to put it out to the church? So I'm going to just put it out to the church. You can do whatever you want. Uh, if you want to get in on that and you want to put anything toward that, that's more than you're more than welcome to do that. Uh, it, it just it's it's something that the church needs. Uh, most churches they'll get into a building and they'll they'll have just a little building and they'll never have a vision for anything in the future uh, that could possibly ever happen. Well, I'm telling you what, I sit on a ship all by myself uh, for nine years and I never thought this would happen. And if I'm going to sit here and say. I'm not going to do anything for something that possibly could. Now, that I left the ship in 1989, 1990, 90, 2000, 2010, 2020, 2023. That's, that's 30, or what, uh, what is it, 20 something years? No, 30 years. 33 years later, here we are doing this. Uh, 15 years ago, when we bought this property, it was just a piece of property and it was all messed up and we got it pretty much squared away. Got the house behind it, which extended the back property because there was an issue there with the line and everything else. Now that solves that problem. This will solve the other problem. Then Mike comes up and says, well, you know, the property now is going to look like this. And we, if we get that, it'll be over here. There's this little lot right here that would, we need to get so it'll be square. I'm like, I didn't say that. He said that. So y'all blame him. Amen. But what will happen is it'll give, give you know, the future church an opportunity to do stuff, and as we grow, if we do, and I, I think unless the Lord comes back, my plans on the church keep on going. I want the church to be right here in 25 years, 30 years. I talked to Brother Siler one day, and he said, Mike, go somewhere, sit there for 20, 30 years. They'll know right where you're at, and they'll be able to come to where you're at. What's wrong with most churches is they move. I don't want to move. So if you can't move, then what you got to do is you got to buy the stuff up around you to make sure that you have what you need down the road to do what needs to be done. And if you don't, we could, uh, we, the, there's four apartments and then a house on that property. Uh, we could rehab the four apartments and the house and let it pay for itself. Uh, we could recover the money back from that over a period of time and let it pay for itself. Uh, but we would have control of the property. There's been a lot of drugs come through there, probably prostitution, who knows what else. And if you go over there right now, it looks, it looks bad. I mean, it looks, you walk into the buildings or the rooms, and it just looks like people flop house, you know, throwing mattresses on the floor, sleeping on the floor. It's just a mess. Uh, but we could get over there, take a couple, well, probably get them to drop a couple 40-yard uh, dumpsters or 80-yard dumpsters, the big ones, and just fill them up. Have them pick them up, get another one. Have them fill them up, pick them up, get another one. And just keep going. We have a pizza party, uh, and you can have all the pizza you want if you work. If you don't work, you can watch us work, and then we'll eat the pizza in front of you. Uh, but but we could clean that up real easy and uh, then go through each one of those apartments and it wouldn't be much to make them work again. But we have access, we have the land in case you want to do something. And if the future came and let's say somebody wanted, we want to put a building on the front of this, 
then you'd have the space there to do it, and then you can knock down a few things here and there. And uh, it's amazing. I was telling Mike the other day, and I told I just told a few. I told my wife a few minutes ago. I told a few other people that too. Uh, I told y'all about a, a month ago, or I got a couple things I have to finish, and until I finish that, the Lord ain't gonna do nothing else with us, or with me, anyways. I said I made a deal with him 15 years ago that I would do what I said I'd do in this building, <clears throat> and almost to the day when that nursery will be done this week, and that nursery is being done, that piece of property opens up 15 years later. And I'm sitting there going, yeah, that's God. I mean, uh, to me, it's either I'm stupid or that's the Lord, one or the other. I mean, and I told the Lord 15 years ago I would do this. It's like Noah's Ark. He walks away. He comes back 100 years from now, and he says, did you do what I told you to do? Yes. Okay, now here's the next step. Get on the ark because I'm going to flood the place out. Uh, and here is a, here's this over here. So we made a, a bid for 150. We'll see what they say. Uh, they wanted. She told me that real, our real estate agent said 200. I said, nah, I feel more like 150. Actually, I feel like free, uh, but I don't think the Catholic Church is going to give it to us for free because we're Baptist, Baptist. Unless we turn Catholic and we take it as a ministry for a little while, and then we come back to Baptist. But I don't think that'll work. Anyways, Genesis chapter 30. Uh, Jacob, Jacob is here. Jacob is on his way to. Or he's at Laban's now, and, and uh, he gets tricked into uh, marrying Leah. And nobody gets tricked into marrying anybody. He, uh, he just he didn't make sure exactly what he was doing. Whatever the reason was, that's his fault. Uh, he gets Leah, and Leah has a handmaid, and, and Leah has four kids. Uh, and uh, Rachel gets kind of upset. It says, and when Rachel, verse 1, and when Rachel saw that, the, that she bare uh, Jacob no children, Rachel envied her sister and said unto Jacob, Give me children, or else I die. And Jacob's anger was kindled against Rachel, and, and he said, Am I in God's stead? Who hath withheld from thee the fruit of the womb? And she said, Behold, my uh, maid Bilhad, Bil, Bilhad, had, Bilha, go in unto her, and she shall bear upon my knees, and uh, I may also, that I may also have children of her. And she gave him Bilha, uh, her handmaid, to wife, and Jacob went in unto her, <clears throat> and Bilhad conceived, and, and bare uh, uh, Jacob his son, and Rachel said, God hath judged, uh, judged me, and hath also heard my voice, and hath given me a son, therefore uh, called his name, she called his name Dan, and Bilhad, uh, Rachel's maid, conceived again, and bare Jacob a second son, and Rachel said, with great wrestlings have I wrestled with my sister, and I have, I have prevailed, no you haven't, uh, your, your uh, handmaid has. And she called his name uh, Naphtali. Uh, and Leah, when Leah saw that she had left bearing, she took Zilpah. So now it's a race. It's, a, it's one of these races. Uh, it, one of these things, uh, I'm going to stop right there and I'm going to uh, go back to verse 1. Uh, there's, there's some issues going on here that, that teach us some lessons today. Uh, God gives you stuff to do and really it's, it's to you. And what other people around us will see is or you personally or me, they'll see you doing something, then they'll get envious of what you're doing. It's that verse first says that when Rachel saw that she bare Jacob no children, Rachel envied her sister. Now, envy is is a terrible thing, man. I got a couple verses. I mentioned them a couple weeks ago too. Uh, Proverbs 14:1. Every wise woman buildeth her house. Well, Rachel is not obviously not a wise woman, uh, but the foolish plucketh it down with her hands. Ladies, you are responsible for your home, whether you believe it or not. Uh, your home is what you make it. And if you don't make it what it should be now, guys, your responsibility is to make sure the wife has everything at home that she needs to make the home work. Uh, when I met Beth, I, me and Beth was talking, and I had a list a mile long, and I said, basically, I wanted a wife who wanted to stay home and have kids. And, but I didn't want to make her do that. I don't want somebody to say, you male chauvinist pick. My wife made me a male chauvinist pick. I'm a male chauvinist pick because she wants me to be. And, uh, I mean, she's, she's made me exactly like she wants this is the pig I am. And I'm okay with that. But I made sure she had the stuff that she needed to have the house. And if I had to go out and work two jobs, that's what I did. If I had to work 24 hours a day, that's what I did. I did whatever it took. Uh, a servant, a servant doesn't care about what the job is. A servant does the job. What's wrong with most people is, oh, no, I think I'm too good for that. No, you're never too good for that. That's, I'm not, I'm preaching now. I'm getting preaching, man. This you can't teach this stuff. Your job, your job is your job. It's what God gave you. Now, here you go. God gave one person one thing. He gave another person the other, and he didn't give you the same thing somebody else got. And for you to think you're going to get somebody else what somebody else got ain't going to happen unless you go out and do what they did to get that job. 
or you go out and do to get the training. And what happens is you start envying someone else. Rachel's envying her sister. Well, there's no way that Jacob, in the verse 2, uh, Jacob starts talking about some things, but there's no way Jacob did it. It said that the Lord, the Lord stopped her from having children. It, it'll say that here in a few minutes. He, he closed her womb. And that is, that is Rachel, God did that. She's trying to blame Jacob. It's not Jacob's fault. Jacob's already had four kids by Leah. He's not sterile. Sorry, can't help you. You got the problem. Uh, now, if the two people, there's only two and there's no children, and you got, and back then you could say either way, but uh, she starts envying Rachel or, or her sister Leah. Uh, Proverbs uh, 14, 29 says, He that is slow to wrath is of great understanding. I got issues there, but that's okay. But he that is of a hasty, hasty of spirit exalted folly. A sound heart is the life of the flesh, but envy the rottenness of the bones. Envy is the word, one of the worst things you envy and pride. Only by pride cometh contention. Envy, envy. you're starting to look at somebody and you're saying, hmm, uh, I, I want envy. Painful or resentful awareness of an advantage enjoyed by others uh, joined with a desire to possess the same advantage. You're trying to get something somebody else has and you don't know how they got it. And you think you deserve it. That's what's wrong with our country today. That's what's, this racism thing is all, it's stupidity. I was reading a couple articles from different people, and they said, well, if you whites would just do, no, wait a second, wait a second, wait a second. Whoa, 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 back up. Uh, it, it, the, the white people that they're talking about that's got all the money affect me just like it does them. Uh, they control what we do and, and give you options to do what you're going to do. All you have to do is just work harder and harder and harder. Now, they were talking to an astrophysicist, a black astrophysicist, and he he was sitting there saying, you know, we still don't have the, the uh, fr I'm like, wait a second, you're an astrophysicist. What are you talking about? I, I worked with a guy, uh, oh, what was the guy's name, out of that satellite station, Russ Lee. Uh, he was a site engineer, brilliant man, brilliant man, black guy, brilliant man. I, I mean, I loved Russ. Russ was a good guy. I could work with him all day long. Me and him would go back and forth. I could ask Russ anything. Russ could give me the answers. Russ would come to me and say, hey, Mike, what do you think about this? And we worked back and forth. The guy's a brilliant man. Uh, and Russ come up through there. Nobody could touch him. And when I left that place after 10 more years, 10, 15 years later, Russ was still out there as a site engineer. You couldn't touch the guy, man. He knew that site like the back of his hand. Uh, but, but envy, when Russ never envied anybody. Russ did his job, loved his job. He was, he was the top of his, he's at the top of his game. I never heard him say anything negative about anybody anywhere. That's why I mean him got along so good. Uh, I had 26 ETs I worked with, and all they did was rust this, rust that. I said, ah, oh, shut up, man. That guy knows what he's doing. The rest of you don't. Opportunity, God, time and chance happen to every man. And you don't have to worry about what somebody else has. And when we start looking at other, other people, that's, a, that's just a venue that the devil's got with us now that he can slide in there, and he'll start getting us thinking we deserve more than what we get. Yeah, you do deserve more, by the way. We all deserve more than what we get. We deserve a place called hell. That's what we deserve. And, but, but the Lord in his gracious mercy, long-suffering, got us out of them. Uh, Acts 7, 9, uh, and the patriarchs. I mean, here's Joseph. Now, Joseph's got some issues. I got that. Joseph, I'm, I'm looking at envy now just for a second. Joseph comes in with his coat of many colors. You've heard me tell you a lot of times. He's got his coat of many. He's showing off to his brothers. Well, his daddy likes him more than he likes his other brothers. There's a problem there. But we'll get to that in a minute, too. But then that causes a lot of problems down the line. you gotta, you got to be very careful how you treat your kids. Each and every one of them are different. Uh, I tell Jessie, there's Jessie, my daughter, sitting there. I say, she's my favorite Jessie. She is. I don't have another Jessie I like more than her. However, i got an Elizabeth that I like, and i got a Sarah I like. That's my favorite Sarah right back there. i got to watch Esther now. That's something. we got to talk about that one. <laughs> but, 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 but. Andrew's my favorite Andrew. You say, why? Because each one of them are different. And you got to treat them different, but you got to love them the same and, and do whatever you can do to help them uh, the same. And each one of them have different uh, got goals in life, uh, desires in life. And, and I've learned as a dad, you got to back away sometimes, just let them do and stand up and fall and stand up and fall and stand up and fall. Well, Joseph did that, and he goes out there to his brothers with his little coat on, and they says they moved with envy and sold Joseph unto Egypt, into Egypt, but God was with him. They think, and even Joseph told them later, Joseph never was mad at them for what they did. Joseph said, God sent me before. Joseph always put the Lord did. Now, there's where the difference between envy and, and loyalty to the Lord is. Joseph, 
he now, if you'd ask, you say, yeah, I don't really want to be thrown in a pit. I really don't want to be sold to Potiphar. I really don't want to go down to the prison cell. But boy, I tell you, by the time he got up to Pharaoh, I bet you he forgot pretty much all that stuff. He come right up. Uh, Potiphar and his wife, uh, his wife lied about him. And Potiphar uh, was the key to put him into prison. And when Joseph was sitting second to Pharaoh, he could have took Potiphar out in a heartbeat. All he had to do was say the word and Potiphar was gone. You never hear him say anything about that. When envy doesn't have a, 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 an avenue in our lives, a, a, a path in our lives, you'll find that the joy of the Lord is your strength. And no matter where you're at, you'll be happy. Joseph was happy at Potiphar's house. Joseph was happy in the pit. Joseph was happy doing what his daddy said. Joseph was happy working with the Pharaoh. Joseph had a good life, man. I mean, that joy, I tell you what, joy is what you need in life. And if without that joy, you're going to be miserable. It said they sold him with envy, and, but Joseph knew exactly what the Lord had done. Joseph always was looking for the Lord in that thing. And the Lord was always present in Joseph's life. There's another thing right there. It wasn't that just Joseph was down there and all happy and everything. God was in Joseph's life and Joseph knew it. So it doesn't matter where you're at. If the Lord is really in your life, there's going to be a level of joy in your life that the, the average person just won't have. I choose, I, choose, I choose life. I like life. Life is good. Acts 13, 44. And the next Sabbath, uh, this is, this is uh, Paul sitting up there. Well, it's the Pharisees. And the next Sabbath day came almost the whole city together to hear the word of God. Uh, but when the Jews saw the multitude, now here's Paul, he comes in to preach, and he's preaching Jesus. I'll tell you what, you know what the world needs to hear more about? It's Jesus. Uh, and the problem we have a lot of time, we keep trying to tell them about this. Brethren, the building means absolutely nothing. The land means absolutely nothing. But with, we had a fellowship here uh, Friday night, and I was telling somebody, I said, but if you don't have the building, how are you going to have the fellowship? How can you let the people get together and have fun and enjoy Christianity if you don't have a place for them to come? Uh, try to raise sheep. Now, you go, God says we're a shepherd. Over it says the shepherd leave the sheepfold. So you got to have a sheepfold. you got to have something with a fence around to hold the sheep in. Otherwise, they're scattered all over the place. I don't care where you go. This stuff still needs to be there. But you can't let that stuff get in the way. And people will start envying us because of what we got. Well, I'm sitting there looking. I said, Lord, this is really a small work. I mean, it really isn't a great big one. And I said, you know, you think of some of these other big works, and sometimes I can say, oh, well, we ain't got no $200 million building, and we have to work for everything we get. That missionary who came through yesterday or Sunday, uh, Wednesday, he said, Mike, I could go back on the field right now. He said, after coming to your church, he said, my cup runs over. He said, your son took me, Jake and, and Andrew took him out to coffee Saturday. They didn't ask me to go to coffee. Oh, no, the missionary comes in. Hey, you want to go to coffee? Let's go get some coffee. Ah, well, Y'all probably bought his too, didn't you? Yeah. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> you see where I'm coming from? <laughs> no. But, I, but they said, he goes, I've been all over this country, a lot of churches, and I have yet had two young men, one of the pastor's sons, take me out to coffee. He goes, you just don't see that anymore. He said, y'all got something here that most churches don't have. And, and I said, what's that? And he goes, young people. He said, there's not a lot of churches with a lot of young people in it that just want to do what the Lord wants them to do. It's an amazing thing. Uh, you got to get that. They were filled with envy and spake against Paul, the, the, those things that you spoke about Paul, contradicting. They were mad. Here's Paul can get a crowd together, and they hate that because they can't get a crowd together. Well, Paul's just telling them, hey, you've been under bondage for thousands of years, there's a man named Jesus Christ came and died a, a couple days ago, months ago, whatever, however long ago it was. And he died on a cross in, in, in Jerusalem. They hung him out there, and, and they put him up there, and he died. He gave up the ghost, and he rose from the grave three days later. And now the door is wide open, and anybody who wants to go through there, you don't have to do the law no more. The law is going to be done away with. If you trust Jesus Christ, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, thou shalt be saved. They hate that. People were looking for, you know what they're looking for? is a way out of the mess that we're in. And the only way out of this mess is Jesus Christ. Well, anyways, envy. Rachel's envying. Envy goes all the way back to the beginning of time, man. It's, it's a terrible thing. Give me children. Leah's already bore four children for Jacob, and she, so there's no problem. Jacob has got a problem. Reuben, Simeon, Levi, and Judah. And it, Levi and Simeon cause a lot of problems in, in the road down. Sometimes uh, Jacob, Jacob wanted Rachel. Uh, oh, man, I tell you what, or else I'd die. You see the character of that girl? I got a, when, when the pressure is put on Rachel, she shows her true character. 
Uh, Rachel is a spoiled, stinking brat is what Rachel is. She's a very good-looking girl probably. I'm, they, there's no pictures of her anywhere around. haven't seen her, but I'm sure she's a very good-looking girl. Uh, young woman, she, and, and Leah is probably not. says she's tender-eyed, fair, and, and Rachel is well-favored, and, and, and her daddy probably gave her everything because of her looks, and, and Rachel thought, oh, I've got everything because of my looks. Beauty is only skin deep, uh, but it is a valuable asset if you're poor and haven't any sense. Uh, so if, <laughs> if you're stupid and dumb, make sure you look good. Uh, <laughs> but... but <laughs> What was that one? Somebody was telling me a blonde joke the other day. What was that blonde joke? Uh, who was that? Who told us that? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he, uh, he was, he, that was you told us that. He goes, uh, I was sitting in the back back here. Now, I don't get into blonde jokes. So if, you're, if you colored your hair and you're brunette, don't worry about it. But, you're, but if you're blonde, that doesn't really apply to everybody. <clears throat> but it does. It's amazing. He goes, she went up to the doctor, a blonde went up to the doctor and said, doctor, I hurt. I hurt here, and I hurt here, and I hurt here, and I hurt here. And he goes, you broke your finger. <laughs> some, of you, some of you all ladies aren't laughing at that, man. What's up with that? Or else I'd die. Uh, compared to Hannah, now go back to, go to, go to Hannah. Go to uh, 1 Samuel chapter 1. There, there's a way to do everything, brother, and it's, it's an attitude. It's all an attitude. It's something you learn. Uh, you just have to learn it after a period of time. Uh, 1 Samuel chapter 1, Hannah, Hannah has a sister, and Hannah can't have kids either. Almost the same scenario here. Uh, the Lord's closed her womb up. And verse 9 says, so Hannah rose up. Uh, go to verse 8, her husband, Elkanah. Her, uh, then said Elkanah, her husband, to uh, her, Hannah, why weepest thou? Well, she can't have any kids, and, and back then it was important. And uh, why eat, uh, eatest thou not? And why is thy heart grieved? Am I not better to thee than ten sons? Uh, no, so, uh, sorry, you're not, Elkanah. A woman back then uh, was not fulfilling her purpose unless she had kids. And that's what she wanted. So Hannah rose up after, verse 9, uh, rose up after uh, they had eaten in Shiloh and after they had drunken. And now Eli the priest sat up upon the seat uh, by the post of the temple of the Lord, and she was in bitterness of soul, and prayed unto the Lord, and wept sore. She vowed a vow and said, "O Lord of hosts, if thou wilt indeed look upon the afflictions of thy handmaid, you know Hannah takes a right to the Lord. That's where she's at. And remember me, and not forget thy handmaid, but will give uh, unto thy handmaid a man child. Then I will give him unto the Lord all the days of his life, and there shall no razor come upon his head." Now that's Samuel. And Hannah is sitting here going, Lord, I can't have a child, and I really want a child. And go back to Genesis, and I really want a child. And if you give me a child, I'm going to give him back to you. He's yours. Uh, and that's the attitude that we should all have. Uh, what, what the Lord gives us isn't really ours. It's his. Uh, what I have is never mine. It was always his. He just allowed me to, to use it. Uh, what's wrong with a lot of us is we think that it's ours, and it's really not. It's the point that a man wants to die. That means that one of these days I'm going to quit. Take I'm going to take a last breath, and everything that I had is staying here. It's not. It's not going to be here anymore, and uh, it's not going to be for me anymore. It's not going to do me any good. So it's not mine. Uh, it, I, I can't. You quit paying tax. You pay. Quit paying uh, taxes on your house and see if they don't come and get it. It's not yours either. It's yours until they amass enough debt against it, and then you lose it. So you have to work to the day you die to pay for the land, that, the taxes that the city. Well, why do I have to pay taxes? Well, then don't go on the road. Don't get a job. Don't buy no land. Go live in Canada or something up in the, in the Rocky, in the mountains. I don't know. Go find some place where you don't have to pay taxes. Live off the land. But as long as you're living on the land, you've got to pay taxes, and you just got to do it. There's nothing you can do about it. And pay Social Security. That's really important because I'm on Social Security. That's really cool. We love it. We love it when you're a... a, a a, uh, what's the word, we're a productive citizen. Uh, you have to do it. We did it, you did it. I didn't think it would ever come. But he, she says, or else I die. What a childish way to, to talk, I'll, or else I die. Uh, okay, then die, man, die. <laughs> That's the way I'm looking at it. Uh, you say, you know, and, and Jacob is starting to get this thing. Guys, I'm going to tell you something. You see this good-looking little girl, and you think, oh, she's everything in the whole wide world. You better stop for a second and think, can I? Now, once we get past the, the, the marriage, can we, like, talk? After that and have fun, can we have a good time later on down the road? If you can and you get it, I mean, that's fine. Uh, Beth, Beth was a good-looking girl when we got married. She's a good-looking girl to me today. 
but, but we can have fun together, and we've had fun for 33 years. If you can't have fun, I mean, this stuff goes over. Looks go over after a few minutes. You got to make sure that you, and it's it's and and it should be a thing where you're not got your thumb down on the girl or on the lady, and the lady. See now here, these ladies. Guess what? These four ladies are running Jacob around like a chicken with his head cut off, from house to house to house. You talking about a guy being a whoremonger? These ladies are even worse, man. I mean, I can't imagine one guy and four ladies. I can't even imagine that. I don't even want to imagine that. Uh, I told Beth if anything ever happens to her, I'm going to go into seclusion somewhere and just die. Uh, that, I don't, I don't want, I don't want to go through what I went through before to try to woo another. I, I don't want to do it, man. I mean, I, I, it's just at my age, I'm like, no, I'm done. People say, oh, you won't do it. Oh, yes, my girls are talking about if I die, what Beth needs to do. I don't know if they're talking about what I need to do because I guess they figure I'm going to be dead first. My tooth fell off. I went to the dentist, and he looked at the, <laughs> it was a crown, and he looked at it and goes, he goes, you're going to need some work under that. Uh, that crown. He said, probably need to redo that whole thing, and then if we do that, we're going to have to put a new crown on it. And he looked at me and looked at the crown, looked at me and looked at the crown, and said, ah, we'll just put it back on. I guess he figured I'm going to be dead before I can. <laughs> so he said, well, put some more goop in it, and he sticks it on, and, and uh, hopefully it'll be there till I'm gone. But, it, you know, it's time after a while, time and chance to have never man. I'm not saying that. I, it's just life, man. Life goes. I'm expecting the next thing. Uh, which is heaven, but you know what? If if it's not heaven, then what I'm looking for. Let me turn this thing off before it goes off. Because if it goes off, I'm going to be awful, man. I hate this. Do do do. I'll turn it way down. There we go. But anyways, uh, just like buying that building. What happens if the Lord doesn't come back for another 20 years? What are we going to do? So you got a plan like there is 20 years. In my case, young people, you got to plan like there's a whole life out ahead of you. But you can never forget that every day you wake up, and today could be the day. Uh, I remember in 1989, I thought today was the day, and it wasn't. I thought in 1990 that that year was the year, and it wasn't. 91, that year was the year, and it wasn't. Now it's 2023, and I thought this year, well, 2022 definitely is not the year. But, however, 23, man, 23 could be the year. Hannah took her issue to the Lord. That's the difference. If you compare these two ladies, Rachel and Hannah, you, the first thing you should ever uh, find yourself doing is when you have a problem is taking that thing to the Lord for guidance. There's no possible way that you can figure out what to do in this world. Uh, we go to doctors right off the bat. Now, I'm not saying I think, I think you should. I use doctors all the time. However, comma, I think you should have perfect peace about the doctor you choose. If the Lord says use this doctor, then go use that doctor. If the Lord doesn't say, if, if he just says chill out, then chill out. But sometimes we sit there and we run right to the doctor thinking the doctor's everything, and we never take it to the Lord at all to find out what God would say do. And, and people say, well, what's if he doesn't answer? Well, then maybe you shouldn't do nothing until he answers. Rachel took her uh, issue to Jacob. Jacob cannot solve her problem. He is not a doctor. He cannot give her the medicine she needs or whatever. He cannot diagnose what's wrong with her. Uh, her problem should be like Hannah. She should take it right to the Lord, but she didn't. She had no relationship. You'll find that out here in a few minutes. Uh, Hannah had a relationship with God. Rachel only cared about herself. I want children or else I die. What a childish little thing. If I don't get what I want, I'm going to die. I'm just going to lay down and die. Well, then lay down and die. Uh, Jacob, you done chose the wrong one anyways. Leah is the one you should have chose, and, and you'd have been a much better man. And had. But then, but then there's a, I'll, I'll get in that in a few minutes. Uh, Hannah gave that which she couldn't have to the Lord once she received it. Rachel also got what she wanted, but eventually it took her life. She wanted kids. The second one killed her. Uh, you know, sometimes you ask for stuff that, that you're not thinking. <clears throat> if the Lord wants you to have it, he'll give it to you. But if you try to get what it, you uh, ahead of the game or you try to get something that you really shouldn't, you don't know what all the ramifications are out in the future. And Rachel, when she gets ready to have Benjamin, she dies on uh, having Benjamin. Her life was cut real short for that. Verse 2, and Jacob's anger was kindled against Rachel, which is good. It shows uh, Jacob's got some guts. And he said, am I in God's stead who hath withheld from thee the fruit of the womb? Jacob knew exactly who closed her womb. And sometimes that's exactly what happens. God closes, does this, he does that. Uh, I remember when we started this church, I was getting sick every year. I mean, 25 years I was sick all the time. I got records to go back 25 years. I mean, deathly ill for four or five months a year. And uh, I told the Lord, I was, well, I was looking for any way to get out of this as I could. 
And uh, I said, I can't do this because I'm sick every year. And I can't preach. Well, I can't preach anyways, but uh, four, three, four, five months out of the year being sick like this, I can't get up in front of the church hacking and all that stuff. I hadn't been sick since. You say, what is it? That's the Lord. Uh, the Lord says, okay, now what? Well, how about... Uh, 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 I feel like that, uh, that prophet come up and said, smack the arrows. And he smoked, smacked him three times and he got me. I should have been still smacking, man. I want this. I want that. I want this. I mean, I had a blank check sitting in front of me. I asked for five things. I got all five things. I cut it way short, man. I, 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 my goals were way too low. I should have had about 100, list of 100 things. Uh, we'd had a brand new building and 10,000 people and, and uh, everything. And, and buses and vans and cars and trucks and planes. We'd had jet planes and everything. Uh, but no, I, I, I cut it for five, and that's and the Lord gave me all five of those when we started this church in my garage. You say, what is that? That's the Lord. He, he knows exactly what he's doing. Jacob is now in a pickle. He's got a wife that's mad at him. He's got another wife that's mad at him. Uh, he's got a couple handmaids that, that is probably mad at him. He's got everybody mad at him. Four women, he's got a problem. His first wife didn't want, he didn't want, but got her anyways. The second wife he did want is now mad at him. The first wife has given him children he wanted by Rachel, and Rachel can have children, uh, can't have children, and is blaming Jacob for her condition. Jacob is just having a great day. <laughs> I mean, it's bad enough to have a one-woman problem or a lady having a guy problem. It's, it's bad enough. But to have four of them against you, man, I mean, this would be crazy. Jacob has seen Rachel for who she really is, a spoiled, selfish child who has always trusted in her looks instead of her brains. I mean, that, that's the problem. Rachel is sitting there, and she is, when the way she's talking, you give me this or else I'm, uh, wait a second, wait a second. I, I can't have no control over that stuff, and I can't give you what you're asking for anyways. Verse 3, and she said, now this is the way that relationship starts. This, this is what I was telling you about Jacob. Jacob went over there, and you think you can connive your daddy, and you can connive your brother, and you can do all the stuff you did. And it ain't coming back. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever man soweth that shall he also reap. It's coming back on that guy. And he's just now starting to pay that thing back. And he's got 20 years to pay that thing back. And he's going to regret every moment of what he did. I like, I like go over to Genesis. Go to Genesis. Genesis 47. <clears throat> Verse 7, it says, And Joseph brought in Jacob. This is when Jacob comes to Egypt. And Joseph brought in Jacob, his father, and set him before Pharaoh. And, Pharaoh, and Jacob blessed Pharaoh. And Pharaoh said unto Jacob, How old art thou? And Jacob said unto Pharaoh, The days of the years of my pilgrimage are 130 years. Few and evil have the days of the years of my life been and have not attained unto the, the days of in the years of the life of my fathers, in the days of their pilgrimage. Jacob has had a miserable life. I mean, could you imagine all the years that Joseph's down there? Uh, Joseph is down there seven, uh, probably 14 years, 20 years, something like that, in Egypt. And that whole time, Jacob thinks his son is dead, and he's not dead. Uh, I mean, you, you start looking at it. Jacob did some stuff. What you do, what you do is going to come back on you. And the Lord can sink some ships. Dr. Roman always said your, your life is like a series of ships. And you load them up on a dock down there, and you, all your sin you put on the ship, and you keep putting that sin on the ship, and you keep putting the sin on the ship, and it goes out to sea, and then another one comes in, and you got to load it up. And then you send it out, and another one. And one of these days, those ships are going to come back in, and you got to unload them. So while you're loading them on one side, you're unloading them on the other. He said, what you need to do is quit loading them. Quit loading the ships. And he goes, and then just suck it up, buttercup, and then when the last ship comes in, you're done. And then in the process, pray that God sinks some of those ships out in the middle of the ocean so they don't ever come back in. And that's just our life, man. Our life, life is great, man. I think life is one of the greatest things. That, it's a gift that's given to us that is unbelievable, and you can choose whatever to do with your life. And what I found out is that to learn how to be a servant the best you can uh, is far more fun than anything I've ever done in my life. Because you get to help people, but you get to do it for the Lord. You don't do it for anybody else. You do it for him. Uh, and, and she said, uh, she, Rachel, verse 3, she now gives uh, Bilhah unto her husband. And she said, Behold, my maid Bilhah. So she gives him uh, her handmaid, thinking, and that's the way women thought back then, which is, to me, ignorant too. 
Oh, uh, I'll, get, I'll let you use her as, as my slave. She's my slave woman, so I'll let you have her as your wife. And now she'll have kids, and then I'll feel better about myself. But no, she had kids. You didn't. Uh, it goes down in verse 6. Uh, she had Dan. She had Naphtali. You're injecting. Rachel is injecting another uh, foe into this mix. She's already got Leah and her got issues. Now she's going to bring Bilhah in here, and, and Bilhah's going to worry about her kids, just like any mom does. She's got Dan and Naphtali, and she wants them to uh, have just as much stuff as, as uh, uh, Judah and, and Levi and Simeon and Reuben. So she's going to get mad at that. Then, then Leah says, I can't have kids. So then she wants to interject her handmaid in there too, Zilpah. And Zilpah has Gad and Asher down in verse 13. Now uh, Zilpah is going to want her kids to get what she wants. And it, it just becomes more and more, oh, what a tangled web we weave. When at first we uh, attempt to deceive, I think that's how it goes. <clears throat> the thing to do, man, is just stay away from all that. Just say, Lord, I'm at a point in my life anymore like I'm just waiting. If I do any more beyond what I'm supposed to do, i got the strangest feeling I'm going to mess up. And it's like that room back there. I knew, well, I, I looked at the bathroom and the nursery. I said, ah, the two, which one? I'll do the bathroom first. When we got the bathroom done, then I figured, okay, I'll go over here and knock this out. And then all the major things in the, in the church will be done. And as soon as we did that, here comes this apartment complex over here open. And we need the land. I see the land as a need in the future. Uh, but I said, Lord, here it is. And he goes, yep. And you know what that does? It keeps me out of trouble. The more stuff he gives me to do, <laughs> Brother Joe went over with us yesterday and he goes, this place is messed up. <laughs> Well, yeah, it is, but it's not messed up as some places I've been. And there is, there's, you can always look at it, and, and even the real estate agent over there that was talking about, the one on their side, he said, well, you can always bulldoze it. I'm like, yeah, you can do all kinds of stuff, but we ain't going to do it. Verse 14, and Reuben uh, went in the days of wheat harvest, and, and verse 14, 30, 14, and found mandrakes in the field and brought them unto his mother Leah. And Rachel said unto Leah, give me, I pray thee, of thy son's mandrakes. Now, mandrakes is a poisonous fruit. They can't eat them. I always thought it was a good fruit you could eat, but you can't eat it. Uh, and and uh, verse 15 says, And she said unto her, Is it a small matter that thou hast taken my husband? And wouldest uh, thou take my son's mandrakes also? And Rachel said, Therefore he shall lie with thee tonight for thy son's mandrake. In your Bibles, it's, just, it's like right there in front of everything. I mean, they're, uh, they're husband swapping. I mean, it's, it's bad enough your wife swapping, but now they're husband swapping. And they're taking their husband, and she's selling her husband for a stack of mandrakes. I'm like, man, I said, is that all Jacob's worth? And Jacob is just going along with it. Oh, yeah. Da, 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 da. <laughs> People are crazy, man. I, I, I don't know how else to put it. I mean, we're just, uh, I like my Bible, man. It's just like as open as you could possibly get. Lord doesn't hide, hide anything. Oh, man, go to Job chapter. I just went through Job. Job is great. <clears throat> this reading the Bible four times a year is great. Because it's constant. I mean, it's just more stuff than you can shake a stick at. It's like every time I read something, I think, well, I just read that. Uh, 41. God, God is, is uh, we, we as people, we try to hide everything, and we think we got, uh, we got skeletons in the closet. Uh, verse 41, can thou draw out Leviathan with a hook? Now, he's talking about Satan here. He's, the, Leviathan is the devil. Or his tongue with a cord, which thou us down. He goes down through some stuff. Uh, verse 8, lay thy hand upon him. Remember the battle. Do no more. Behold, the hope of him is in vain. Shall not one be cast down, even at the sight of him? None is so fierce that does stare him up. Who then is able to stand before me? If you can't mess with the devil, you'll never say, Who hath prevented me that I should repay him? Whatsoever is under the whole heaven is mine. I will not conceal his parts nor his power, nor his comely portions, uh, proportions. Who can discover? He said, I'm not going to hide one thing about him. I'm going to tell you everything about him, and you're not going to be able to stand against him, but I'm going to tell you. I'm not going to hide nothing. You know, when God gets in here, he, he, starts, he starts showing you the life of these people, and he does that for a reason, to show us back in Genesis, as we're reading it here in 2023, that we're no different than Jacob. We got Mormons sitting out there in Utah with five or six wives each. Uh, it's, a, it's probably Mormon girls out there have four or five husbands. I have no idea what they got. What does what a Mormon do? I mean, this, it's a crazy thing, man. I guess if women could get in charge, they'd do the same thing guys do. But Rachel, Rachel was sitting here, probably wanted uh, the fruit. The fruit, a mandrake, is a, it, they thought it was an aphrodisiac or a, a, uh, it aided in uh, fertilization. Uh, I don't know exactly what they did with it, uh, but it was a poisonous fruit. 
Uh, you couldn't eat it like you would a normal peas. Uh, but uh, she, she figured if she got the fruit, she would get pregnant. Well, that didn't work too good. Uh, she was two years later before she had any kids. So <laughs> uh, Leah got Jacob for the night and got a couple more sons out of it. And, and uh, Rachel didn't get nothing for a while. Verse 16, and Jacob came out of the field in the evening and Leah went out to meet him and said, thou must come in unto me. I'm like, I'm like, Really? For surely I have hired thee, hired thee. You're my husband. I've hired thee uh, with my son's mandrakes, and thou lay with me, uh, her that night. And and he laid with her that night. Jacob in Genesis is a cool book, man. Uh, Jacob did. We think we think that our world is crazy. It was it was crazy back then. It's never it, it's never changed. This has never changed at all. Uh, and God hearkened unto Leah, and she conceived and bare Jacob the fifth son. Now there's a there's. You watch what the Lord is doing right now, man. He is there is there is things going on that the Lord isn't even looking at because he knows man and what's in man and what the heart of man is. And he understands that you're fighting against a creature called Satan Lucifer and you can't win. So there's some leniency and mercy and grace there that goes on. And in the in the end of this whole thing, he's going to bring his son through a, a young lady named Mary. And we're going to get uh, the door opened up to heaven, and the sacrifice is going to be made, and the blood offering is going to be made, and we're going to get eternal life out of that thing. And God overlooks some things that sometimes we learn very carefully to overlook some things in other people's lives, too. Uh, you never know what the future holds. Now, watch this. God hearkened to Leah. She conceived. Uh, verse 18, she had Issachar. Uh, down in verse uh, 20, uh, Leah uh, had another diary, and and uh, she had another son named San, uh, Zebulun. And verse 21 says, Afterwards, she bare a daughter and called her name Dinah. Now, you heard me talk about Rachel and how she's a baby and all this other stuff. And she's this and she's that and she's this and she's that. Verse 22. And I'll stop right here because you're supposed to ring the bell. You haven't rung the bell yet. Amen. Verse 22. And God remembered Rachel. And God hearkened to her and opened her womb. Rachel is getting ready to have a son named Joseph, which is the greatest type of Jesus Christ in your Bible. This girl had to, I mean, you're talking about going through the fire. This girl had to have some things happen to her that she would listen to God. She had to get to the place where she would listen to what God was saying because through her, God was going to bring a son in named Joseph and the types go, I mean, when we start getting into that thing, the types just go off the chart when it comes to Joseph, uh, about him and Jesus Christ. He's, he's a perfect representation of Jesus Christ on this planet. And when you look at that thing, this lady's getting ready to do that. God turned the tables completely around. Sometimes we look at somebody and shut them down and say, we're done with them and it's over and there's no chance for them ever. Now, sometimes I'll tell you what, God turns people over to reprobate mind. He does that. And he can, he can open it back up and shut it. And when God's done with somebody, he is. But until God's done with them, brethren, we would take heed to, to slow down on some judgment calls in people's lives and cut them some slack. Uh, I like the Lord's always dealt with me uh, a couple times. He said, how would you like me to run you through what they went through and see how you come out? And I'm like, nope, 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 I surrender, I surrender, I surrender all, I surrender all. No, 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 oh, I don't want to go through it. I've done been there, done, got the T-shirt. I've been through some things in life. I don't want to go through them again. And Rachel is coming out of this thing, and I'm going to stop right here. Rachel's coming out of this thing, and she's getting ready to have a kid, and she's still messed up. She does a couple things that's wrong, and she ends up dying uh, in the next baby. But she comes out, and, and the Lord blesses her and gives her a son, and that son is Joseph, and Joseph is the savior of that nation. Father, thank you for your blessings this morning. Thank you for uh, a Bible, Lord, that we can hold in our hands. Thank you for the mercy and grace you had, Lord. And, and, Lord, you're never done until you're done.